Uh, this short talk is about finding prostate cancer. Now, in the last few years in the field of urology, we have seen a couple of very exciting developments, specifically so in diagnosing prostate cancer. To diagnose prostate cancer, you need to have a biopsy. One needs to retrieve tissue so that the pathologist can tell you whether that is cancer or not. To go back a little bit in history, we used to start off, and I'm going to use this model on the table to help direct. We used to start off in theater with a finger in the rectum and try and aim the needle in the direction of the prostate. And you would just remove your finger so you don't hurt yourself and take a biopsy. Since then, things have, have improved dramatically. Firstly, in the late 80s, an endorectal ultrasound, in other words, an ultrasound being in the rectum, helped us do biopsies and you could clearly see where the needle would go. Unfortunately, you had to do the biopsy transrectally then. But the, the rectum is a very sensitive organ and also leads to a lot of infection afterwards. In other words, people getting fever and chills after biopsies like that. But it was a major improvement. Since then, things have improved much more dramatically. More so, firstly, with an MR, and specifically called a 3 Tesla MR, which helps to show you abnormal areas in the prostate. So whereas before we used to uh, take biopsies worldwide in the one side of the prostate and the other side, or rather refer to that because the prostate has different areas and not as we used to know left lobe and right lobe. There's a transitional zone, a peripheral zone, things like that, which is very much different. And we'll get to that in a moment. So we used to stick the needles in transrectally into the, the prostate from the front to the back and then go a little bit more to the side, six to 12 biopsies on a side and see if there's any, any cancer in that area. Since the development of, of MR, it has shown as specific areas where as it would tell you perhaps on the right side, in the front of the prostate or the back of the prostate or in the mid region, where to aim for, what is the most likely area called, uh, and it's a system called PIRADS, where they measure what the likelihood of cancer is and you aim for that specific area. The aim was, was, came with a, a system called the fusion system. And the fusion has to do with taking the pictures and the information on the MR, fusing it with the ultrasound in theater, and therefore helping and directing you towards that specific area. Worldwide, the trend is to move away from the transrectal route and more to the transperineal route. Uh, firstly, and most importantly, to avoid the, in the infection complication. Now, it's not only a mild infection, nor is it easily treatable by oral antibiotics. It's actually called a bacteremia, where the bacteria from a prostate gets into your bloodstream and makes you severely ill with fever, body aches and pains, which mostly has to be treated with intravenous antibiotics and admittance into a hospital. Now the transperineal route is also much less painful. With a fusion system, where you now have a, a direct target to hit, it has dramatically improved finding prostate cancer. So it was much more accurate. And there's not much time to talk about that, but that has been a major improvement and still is the ideal uh, system to use. Adding to that, and in specifically in the last 18 months, a lot of articles well defined and well researched have shown that in spite of that accurate system called the fusion biopsy, the, you still miss at least a 20% of what is called clinical significant cancer. Now, clinical significant means that, as the term says, clinically, it may affect you badly. So it's not the like type of cancers, Gleason 3 plus 3 and those sort of things. It is a cancer that should be treated and shouldn't be missed. So what needs to be done after doing the fusion system where you go what we call for the region of interest. In other words, the specifically signed to the right base area or wherever. One needs to do systematic biopsies and specifically in the peripheral zone. Peripheral zone is the area, as it says, on the periphery. 
where normally you would examine the prostate and that's why the nodules mostly um, occur and that's why it's easy to feel. Now 70 to 80 percent of prostate cancers develop in that region. So it makes sense and now uh, statistics have shown that that you have to also go for areas that the MR did not pick up. Not because there's a fault in that, because purely it does not show the areas or signs that there is a risk of cancer. Ideally, one should have some training as to how the ultrasound helps you to define those areas and what to look out for. But even just going for the specific areas, you increase your yield. In other words, the percentage of prostate cancer found. Now at the urology hospital, we have both systems available and more importantly, both systems that you can do at the same time. So there needn't be a choice about the one or the other. And if one cannot afford the MR, which is quite expensive, at least you can do the systematic biopsies perfectly aimed at the suspicious areas or the areas known to have the prostate cancer. Uh, worldwide and, and countrywide, there are very good areas, uh, very good centers of prostate biopsies, but currently none specific use both systems. At the urology hospital, we are glad that we have that system, so people or urologists can come and do this by themselves, or they can send it to be done for them and then further manage the patient by themselves.